So I thought this morning we would talk a little bit about words. I remember back when, when we were doing youth group, we had something called, uh, we, we did um, Lego words. So the words that you use can be used to build something up or to tear something down. And about how important we have to, it is to be careful with how we say things. Because a person's faith is so delicate that the last thing we want to do is say something wrong in a way that can turn them away from a church or God for a long time. And whether you whether you've had it happen or not had it happen, the healing that it takes to get back to that place where you can go to church takes a long time. So we have to be aware of what we're saying. More importantly, we have to be aware of our actions. Let us pray. Lord, I ask you to, uh, to be with us in this moment. Uh, we know that you are here. We ask that your spirit be in this place. Allow it to work through the music, the scripture, uh, the communion. Just allow it to work in our hearts and our minds. Lord, I ask that my words be pleasing to you. Uh, in your name, we pray. Amen. So uh, when I was growing up, and I'm sure that a lot of you here can relate to this, and uh, my sister's here, so I can't lie. <laughs> but our, our mom and dad was... The type of people that if you said you were going to do something, you, you did it. There, there was no, I'm, I forgot about that, and there was no, I'll get to it later. I, I don't know how many times I had, uh, uh, I had debates with my mom about cutting the grass. I'm like, Mom, it's just weeds. If I cut them, I'm, it's going to just die because of the heat. Yeah, but the weeds are this high. <laughs> so, so it was a matter of if you said something, you did it. Words meant something. And even nowadays, it means even more because not only what comes out of your mouth, it's what you portray on social media. Because one post can be something that somebody can see and think, well, why would I want to go to that church? You know, so we have to be careful about what we do, what we say. But before we get into that a little bit more, I wanted to read the scripture from today. This is Mark 7, verses 1 through 8. The Pharisees and some legal experts from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating, eating food with unclean hands. They were eating without first ritual, ritually purifying their hands through washing. The Pharisees and all the Jews did, don't eat without first washing their hands carefully. This was a way of observing the rules handed down by the elders. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing, emerging themselves and cleaning their hands. They observe many other rules. That they have been that have been handed down, such as the washing of the cups, the jugs, the pans, and the sleeping mats. So the Pharisees and the legal experts asked Jesus, "Why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food without ritually un unclean hands?" He replied, "Isaiah really knew what he was talking about." when he prophesied about you hypocrites. He wrote, the people honor me with their lips, but not their hearts. Their hearts are far away from me. Their, they, their worship of me is empty since they teach instructions that are human words. You ignore God's command while holding on to the rules created by humans handed down to you. You, know, you you have to really think about how many times Jesus was 
questioned by religious leaders and about how they said, well, these are the rules. And Jesus kept telling them, I am here to fulfill a prophecy, to, to be the person that connects people with God. So he wasn't so much worried about the rules. Yes, there are rules to follow, but, but he was focused on the relationship and the one-on-one -on -one and, and the people that didn't feel the love that maybe the religious leaders didn't give them. You can, you can imagine going to a church that might be so big and, and the leaders are up there preaching, but you know that they don't take the time to have a personal relationship with, with you or maybe their, their actions speak differently than their words. This is what, what Jesus is talking about is our actions mean so much more the people outside these doors. The thing that I like about being Methodist, and, and I never thought when I first started being a pastor that I would be involved in, in, and be able to see from the top down. Because if we face it, me including, a lot of people come to church and they have no clue what happens from here up. So what I'm going to tell you is the conference and the leaders of the conference walk the talk, however that saying goes. They know how important the relationship is, period. And it starts from the top down. We have a bishop who is, who is leading who had to deal with, among other, other things, COVID, social injustice, the disaffiliations, and his love and grace from the top fed down to his district superintendents. And that love and grace from the district superintendents flowed down to the pastors. Because what they kept telling us was if, if a church disaffiliate, disaffiliates, that doesn't mean you are not brothers and sisters in Christ. That means that you don't agree about a doctrine. That means that you can still love each other, that you can still support each other. That is one thing that I enjoyed about the Better Way trip is being able to see different religions and to see their dedication to loving each other and loving the community. It's, it's, it's about actions. We can sit and read all the Gospels, but if we don't show people, we're just talking. That's it. So when you have an opportunity you can say, well, you know, I talk to my neighbor all the time. I give them all kinds of grace. Their kids needed supplies. They needed a backpack. I bought a backpack for them. That's, that's awesome. But imagine if you did something on the scale of a church. What if, when we heard the gospel on, on Sunday morning, we understood that it was an individual growth should also be a church growth. It should be a point where we we understand we grow by hearing what Jesus is telling us we should be doing. We had uh, a few weeks ago we had a visitor in in Whiting. Um, Three kids, not well behaved. And what is the one thing most congregations say these days? We need young people. Right? We hear that? Everybody says, oh, this is our future. We need 
you don't young people. Granted, it was a little bit on the extreme side, but at the same time, the other side of your mouth said, those kids were horrible. They were all over the place. I couldn't hear anything in service. I couldn't concentrate on what you were saying. I couldn't hear the songs. Which one do you want? And I am not, believe me, I am not saying there, there is a point where you have to say, let's work on things here together. But if you want to have the people that are looking to be loved, sometimes you have to take what they bring. And if we don't accept what they bring, we are just talking. That's what we have to stop. We have to understand that ministry is complicated, it's messy. It's, it's, it's something that takes work. I don't know for sure if I ever shared this story before, but I'll, I'll leave all the details out, but Jen and I actually were threatened at one point. That's when we were working with the youth. Because we checked on some kids. And we were told, don't you dare come back to our house. And we knew the family, so we knew what that meant. All we could do from that point on is to pray for the family. But up to that point, it had to be more than just talk. It had to be an action. I say all the time, if you need anything, call me. If you need anything, message me. And it might seem like an empty phrase. But as some of you know that I am just a phone call away. And it's a matter of doing more than just saying it. I'm not going to bump you to voicemail because I'm watching Notre Dame. I have to, I, I want to be there. I want to be able to give, to show that action of love, not just talk about it. So the second scripture I want to uh, I want to share with you is from James. You must be doers of the word, not only hearers who mislead themselves. Those who hear but don't do the word are like those who look at their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law the law of freedom and continue to do it. They don't listen and forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. In those who claim devotion to God, don't if those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. True devotion, the kind that is pure and faultless before the Father. Is this to take care of orphans and widows in their difficulties and to keep the world from contaminating us? There was a song that I used for first and third not too long ago, and you might know it. Um, it's, it's called Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. If you have an opportunity, listen to that. Because what it challenges you to do is to look in the mirror when you're complaining about the world. When you're complaining about others. When you're complaining about your neighborhood or your community. Look in the mirror and see who you are and what you can do to make a difference. Because we can talk about how things are bad all day. 
But at some point, we have to take action because that is what we're supposed to do. Now, I think of, of my mom when I talk about if you say something, and you, you're going to do it. That is what that song challenges you to do. I want to change the world. I want to be able to share Christ with people in the community. I want to be able to give to the needy. I want to be able to support those who need support. I want to love those who don't feel loved. I want to help those that feel lost be found by the light of Christ. If you just say those things, it's empty words. Let us not 